Hi, it's Mark Owen from Moose, Market PR, editor of Punchline Magazine. Welcome to Punchline Talks. Today I'm down by Gloucester Keys. You can see it over there. Far over there, we've got the Peel Centre. Then we've got the Costa, new Costa drive through We've got 104 bedroom Premier Inn that was made a couple of years ago. We've got Next over there that you can see as well. And then finally, we've got Baker's Key, and uh, 47 apartments. And standing right next to me, it's Adrian Goodall. Adrian, Morning, love to see you guys. So you're the man that's helped develop all this. We're standing in quite a historical site, aren't we? A lot of people don't realise it. And you've got this next phase, but let's start at the beginning. What, all, what was all this? Well, the thing about heritage, uh, Mark, is nothing stands still. Everyone thinks of moment in time, but it's constantly changing, constantly changing. So when we bought the site in 2016, uh, we inherited a bit of um, effective Victorian history in the context that we were looking to redevelop the Provender Mill. Adjacent to that was the old uh, linseed oil press. Um, so that's the that's the, um, now the beef eater. Yep. And then you've got to sort of go back in time a little bit because originally there was a dock which ran up, the, up here at right angles to the canal, right. the High Water Street dock. And uh, in the mid 1800s, the railway company uh, bought the, the the central part of Baker's Quay and brought railway lines down from the station right through down towards the canal, fanning out down Merchants Road uh, in front of uh, Provender and the Malt House extension. Um, just before that, um, um, the original uh, landowner, Mr. Baker, uh, widened the, uh, the canal and sold plots off to individual investors. One of the first investors was Mr. Foster, who built the Provender Mill. Um, another investor was Mr. Downings, and he built a malt house. Um, and uh, it was on the site of the, uh, uh, the, the, the cleared basement at the moment. And that was so successful that he built a second warehouse um, in the late 1800s, which is what we call uh, the, malt, the warehouse number two, the malt house number two. That was so successful that in the uh, early 1900s, he built his warehouse number three and his warehouse number four, uh, which became known as the malt house extension. So, constantly changing the uh, high Orchard street dock was filled in by the railway company the railway arrived um, the uh, malt house extension was constructed in the 19th century previously a timber yard in the 1950s uh, mr downing's original warehouse was demolished and that famous concrete silo landmark was constructed and uh, we then um, um, demolish that building to gain access for the safety works in effectively warehouse number two uh, two years ago at the start of the pandemic. Okay so let's walk through here if that's okay so show us around so, so that's a little bit of the history of, uh, of where we are and what we're doing because what exactly is a malt house? Show my ignorance. <laughs> Making beer. <laughs> oh, right. okay. So essentially these buildings, you, it's difficult to tell now, but if you take malt house for example, um, the uh, Downing's malt house um, as remaining, um, that uh, uh, barley would arrive in the, uh, in the malt house. They would take it down to the basement level, drench the barley in water, and I think it was called a stooping tank. And then they would take it up to the upper floors uh, they would fire up the kilns in an adjacent building and, and pass warm air through the, uh, the malt house to germinate the barley to become malt. Right, okay. And then it was stored and, and then sold on to brewing companies to make beer. So, uh, so each of these malt house buildings has two functions, a kiln and a warehouse. So, um, and, and this is the reason why we're very keen to preserve the, the Downings malt house. We've already lost in the 50s the first warehouse building and that's why it's so important to retain this last building so two parts the bit you're looking at straight on here is the gable end of the kiln when we complete the restoration works we'll uh, we'll resurrect all the, uh, the the signage with george downing's malt house in the ground floor we're going to reopen this ground floor and spago are going to take a second unit as a cake shop um come coffee shop and then to the right of that, um, difficult to see through the scaffolding, uh, we have the, the warehouse. So if we just pause there and carry on this way, Mark. And there's a hell of a lot of scaffolding. This must be just in you. An absolute fortune, Adrian. There's approximately 30 tonnes of concrete at the base of each, each elevation. Wow. We have to keep the scaffolding up at the moment. 
So what will happen here then? Is, is this going to be a car park or something? If so I remember this is going to be a car park. Um, right. So there's going to be just over 20 car parking spaces, but it's on a gentle slope down into the basement, which will access the, the basement car park where we have another 50 spaces. Right, okay. Um, future proofing the building, I'll come back to that later. But the idea is that um, each car park will have facilities for EV charging. So um, whilst we'll probably fit 20% day one, the whole car park can be um, wired up for electric charging. Now the whole point of it, it's going to be pretty big, isn't it? To make this financially work, it's going to be around 10 storeys high. Um, over there is obviously the Gloucester Cottage. We've got the other side of the keys here, Pizza Express. We've got the cinema on the right hand side here as well. You see how it's, and so it's going to be different types of apartments. I think that's the point we wanted to stress. People have sort of lost track a little bit about what we're doing and we're trying to achieve two separate things at the moment. Firstly, we're trying to restore down 